I will say it, this is the last time. You cannot protest on Fort Sill. You need to move across the street now. Fort Sill has this legacy of oppression starting, you know, way back when with Native Americans. It was a BIA camp for, for Native American children who were taken away from their parents. The Fort Sill history, they came and, of course, killed the, the uh, Indians that were already here. The ones that they didn't kill, they made uh, prisoners of wars and a lot of them died on the base. Fort Sill is an American concentration camp. Geronimo in prison here in 1894 with 341 other Apaches. His death, until his death in 1909. It was an internment camp for Issei. It is so important, especially for as us as Japanese Americans, to be fighting for others and using our privilege now. We all need to be fighting for a collective liberation. What we need to do is um, make a plan for the press conference, okay? And then um, we have to walk through that a little bit with those people who are considering dis civil disobedience. Everyone else has to also be clear about what not to do so you don't get arrested. This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman as we turn to a dramatic scene that unfolded Saturday when five Japanese-American elders, survivors of the U.S. internment camps, engaged in civil disobedience outside the Fort Sill Army Post in Oklahoma, where the Trump administration plans to indefinitely detain 1,400 immigrant and refugee children starting next month. Seventy-five years ago, 120,000 of us were removed from our homes and forcefully incarcerated in prison camps across the country. We are here today to protest the repetition of history. We were in American concentration camps. We were held under indefinite detention. We were without due process of law. We were charged without any evidence of being a threat to national security. We hear these exact words today regarding innocent people seeking asylum in this country. My name is Kyoshi Ina. I'm from Concord, California. And I spent the first four and a half years in a concentration camp. I'm Nikki Nojima Lewis. And on December 7th, 1941, in Seattle, Washington, I was celebrating my fourth birthday when the FBI interrupted my birthday party and removed my father to Lordsburg, New Mexico, the DOJ camp, and subsequently Santa Fe, New Mexico. Yes, 77 years has passed. The people look a little different than us, okay? But the fact remains, it's the same shit as before. You're not allowed to protest on Fort Sill. You can go across the street, and, you, and that needs to happen right now. Otherwise, what will happen? I, I, I don't know. No, I'm not going to arrest you, but you need to move now. So then we're not going to move. Statement. Yes, you're going to move. If you're not going to arrest us, we're not going to move. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. I spent three and a half years at Post in Arizona, an American concentration camp during World War II, and I'm here to bear witness to the uh, travesty of uh, American, the American justice system in that the family separation policy, which is uh, ruining the lives of these children, we, the people, have to stand up and protest this. It requires a lot of mental discipline in that moment. Um, you might be separated from each other. Are you okay to be handcuffed and by yourself in a cell? The history of the United States is a history of incarceration, is a history of um, locking people up because they are perceived as other, because they're perceived as foreign. My name is Paul Tomita. I'm from Seattle, Washington. This is me in 1943 as a four-year-old it's english get out and so what we did with here is i had to have this to get hey, out hey, of look Midodoka. look, look. I, I understand your issues okay but you cannot protest on fort sill they're wanting to remove us uh, we've been removed too many times we're not leaving 
the ACLU is working, they're co-sponsors for this event. So they're, they're very invested in what happens here. So I think we could rely on them. We'll ask them tomorrow when, she, when Jill comes tomorrow. We'll ask her, if we get arrested, are you going to postpone for us? One year ago, in June of 19, uh, 2018, um, when the border situation was erupting and there was a nationwide protest against the separation of families, um, there was a big demonstration at Lake Merritt in Oakland, and I, so I, I was trying to think of some way that, to express my outrage um, as a, you know, as a Topaz descendant. My entire, my mom's entire family was in Topaz, and um, so I feel very strongly about this issue. We both need to be thinking about how history repeats itself, but also how history is like continuously, everything is connected, we're all um, I think all of us and our struggles are connected by the same systems of power and privilege and um, I think it's really important to just like bring that into the light and talk about that and figure out how we can connect across our, both our differences and our commonalities to really fight for all of our freedoms together because I think I always think about that like Audre Lorde quote that we always quote about like we're not, none of us are free until all of us are free, right? I feel it is my responsibility to, to, you know, to tell the world or the public that, hey, this is not right. And in the case of, the, of where they separate the children from their parents, now that's cruel. So as we discussed, we are here to make a statement. Some people here are prepared to make that statement and be arrested because we feel that this is an important enough statement and we must stand up for the children who are going to be brought here. All of our elders who are incarceration survivors have stated publicly that they are willing to be arrested in defense of the children who are going to be yeah, brought here. Yeah, one minute. So everyone who does not want to be arrested, please step away and go to your cars and get your cars and remove them and we'll drive down the road to the next block. Fort Sill uh, had 90 Buddhist priests as part of the 700 who were incarcerated there. And to honor them, I wanted to participate in today's uh, rally and uh, I'll be offering a prayer and uh, a dedication of the Heart Sutra uh, to all of those who uh, were here during World War II, but also to dedicate any kind of merit of chanting that sutra to the children that uh, appear to be imminently arriving here at Fort Sill. It's really a, a crime against humanity, uh, what's, what's going on, separating uh, children from their parents. I mean, no, nobody does that in the world, you know, and, and yet we're doing it here as a matter of uh, policy and, and, and practice. We were met by MPs who demanded that we leave that we take our cars and leave and that we physically remove our bodies. We asked the press to be there because we wanted to make a statement to the world that, that even though there is a law within the United States government that says you may not demonstrate in front of a military base if they ask you to leave, that we answer to a higher law. And that's the law of protecting children. So our elders who were children in concentration camps came here from around the country today and they made us stand there. So I'd like you to please stand up. I'm glad to see that so many people are coming from all over on such uh, short notice. And uh, looks like we also have uh, some pretty good local support as well and I'm very encouraged by that as well. I, I, I hear a, more and more actions taking place around the country uh, and I'm sure there, there'll be others that I haven't heard about yet. Well this issue is important to me because a lot of us in the Brown Beret organization, well we're Chicanos and we're Mexican but we came from America and the border, you know, we've been migrating for thousands of years as a people and the border is not like we're crossing the border but the border already crossed us. I hope that everybody that's watching this uh, searches their hearts and uh, we need a country that is filled with love and compassion not hate and anger. I am one of the representatives of Black Lives Matter, the OKC chapter, and the oppression and the spirit of oppression that Oklahoma, Oklahoma as well as America has a signature for 
is something that is very familiar to the various communities, but especially to the African American community, the Japanese American community, and now they're dealing with our Latinx and or immigrants that are coming here seeking asylum. And so there's no place that I could have been um, other than here today. These cranes were made by people from all over the United States, and we put out a call on social media for um, cranes to be folded when a group of us went to South Texas. This represents the voices of people from the Japanese American community and allied communities who are sending a message to all of the children and families who are incarcerated that we have not forgotten you, that you remain with us in our hearts and we will fight for your freedom. So we're going to hang the cranes now to bring our ancestors and our communities here together with us today. Through the civil rights movement was really where I became aware of these stories. For, so my first uh, heroes were um, Rosa Parks and the whole redress movement. So I feel I don't have an excuse to, to be sitting in, you know, like blissful retirement and uh, writing stories about uh, incarceration. I feel that it's my time now and I feel privileged to do it. It's so critical to take care of children. It is so important to have the children with their mothers. And any policy of a government of a white supremacist colonial power that strips kids from their parents is simply inhumane and intolerable and unconscionable. We dare to remember their human in the face of not just those detained, but all of the immigrant community at fear every single day that one of them, that their family, their mom, their dad, their brother, their cousin, their uncle, their aunt, their friends, their teachers, their classmates, their workmates won't be there any longer. Because this is about humanity. Black and brown and Asian and native bodies have been treated and killed and slaughtered and disrespected and forgotten for far too long. I am putting you on notice. When I see you, I'm gonna tell you, do the work. I'm gonna tell you, we need your money. We need your weariness, we need your tired, we need your effort. And if you are not willing, then do not waste our time and stand with us any longer. If you are come here because your oppression is reflected or associates or affiliates with mine, then the time has come for us all to rise. I say thank you. Thank you for your continued legacy and for your work. I am very humbled by your presence, but I am sickened for the reason that you have to be here. We love you. We stand with you. Let's do the work. Everywhere across this country, hear us now. Join us in demanding that no more, no more children be incarcerated. No more. 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 No more U.S. concentration camps. No more U.S. concentration camps. Thank you. This new direction that the country is taking, uh, the museum has responded really by strategically redirecting our mission to not only preserve the past, but to make it in service to the present and, okay. the, and the future. Okay, okay. So we are really wanting to present the lessons 
that we have had and what the lessons of the past can hold for the present and future. We came back for you because we know mass incarceration. We came back for you because we know family separation. We came back for you because we know deportation, because we know barbed wire, because we know indefinite detention. We came back for you because we care. Some say it's not our fight, it's not the same. But we say incarceration of innocent people is inhumane. We say mothers and children are not to blame. Back in 1942, we disappeared. Empty chairs in the classroom, empty homes, shops, and farms. America turned their backs on us. No one marched. No one protested. There were no petitions. And there was no outrage. Silence filled the empty spaces of our invisibility. Silence was the scourge of our trauma. Silence filled our hearts, our homes, our community. So we came back to let you know that we will not forget you. We came back to drum our messages loud and clear. We came back to hang paper cranes of hope and caring. We didn't know there would be a healing for us. We didn't know that you would cry listening to our stories. We didn't know that the power of shared voices would be like shards ripping away the scabs of silence. We didn't know that the small act of folding a paper crane would speak to so many people in our community. In protest, we chanted, we raised our fists, we sang in Spanish, de colores. We held hands, we sang in Japanese, kutsuga naru. We sang for our grandmothers and grandfathers. We sang for our mothers and fathers. And we sang for you. And in return, you reached into your brown paper bag and tied a string bracelet to, to my wrist. You pushed a tortilla through the chain link fence. You welcomed us wearing ties and hats. You even saved a rock from the old water reservoir, placed it in my hand saying, you had been waiting years for me to come back. Your big brown eyes stared up at me as tears welled up in mine. Little child, you are me, I am you. We will not forget you, we will not be silent. We will come back for you and we will bring others until you are free. No bands, no walls, no camps, no, no. No bands, no walls, no camps, no, no. Yeah. <laughs>